So, uh, this will be a quick talk, but uh, I just wanted to uh, talk about Chrome extensions because I've been playing with them for a while and they're uh, pretty awesome. Um, so, first we'll start off with what are Chrome extensions? <laughs> it's a little uh, scaled, but if you just Google what they are, uh, <laughs> they are a bundle of zip files, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, or, and other resources that you need, like images or anything. But the gist is that they're just web applications that we can use, um, but they have more power. They're built kind of into the browser. They can do uh, more things. But under the covers, they're just HTML, <laughs> CSS, and JavaScript. So we know this stuff. We can easily make them. <clears throat> so let's talk about the Chrome extension structure a bit. Everything comes down to this manifest file. If you create a directory and you put a manifest.json file in there, then you can load that as an unpacked extension into Chrome, and it will automatically figure out what it needs to set up and what it needs to do. There's different things that we can add in there. The first one being the name, uh, version, author, and description. The only one out of those that's mandatory, I think, is name. Um, you have to tell it what manifest version you want to use, which we want to use version 2, I think, since like Chrome 4, maybe. Uh, the permissions that you want to be able to uh, access from there. So we can do crazy things. We can store things. We can get access to to the pages running on any URL, we can uh, do cross-domain AJAX really easily without having to do anything like um, cores or anything. So you can specify all of your permissions in there, and there's tons that you can add. Uh, then you mention different pieces that you want to set up. So you have content scripts that you set up. These run um, with the pages on your uh, that you load up in Chrome. Background scripts are more longer-lived sessions that um, you can use for message passing between the different components of your app. And then you can set up things like page, action, page actions and browser actions, which I'll get into. And then anything that you want to make accessible to the web um, from, from within your uh, Chrome directory, you just put them in the web accessible resources array here. <clears throat> so then this is kind of the structure of it. You have the manifest file, which explains everything. And then from there, you kind of have your page over here. And then the page has the content scripts that, that run uh, within it, in a way. Uh, and then they can talk to uh, background pages or background scripts. And then uh, the, from there, you can talk to other pieces of your application. So you have DevTools pages, uh, browser actions, and page actions. <clears throat> so let's start by looking at content scripts in a little more detail. So content scripts, you uh, put them in the manifest.json just like this. You can tell it what files, that, or uh, I'm sorry, what domains that it matches against. So this content script will run on everything that is HTTP, not HTTPS, apparently. And then uh, I, can, I can specify things like CSS. So if I want to specify CSS to run on this page, and I want to always style this page in a different way, I can do that uh, here, adding in my own custom CSS really easily. Uh, or I can specify JavaScript, and I can tell it um, that JavaScript has access to the DOM, um, and it has limited access to the Chrome APIs, uh, so you can do things like message passing. And you can tell it when you want it to run. So you can have it uh, document start before the rest of the page renders, or a document end after the page is already rendered. But there's a one gotcha with this. It doesn't have access to the JavaScript on the page, unfortunately. <laughs> All it has access to is the page DOM. The page JavaScript and the content scripts both share access to the page DOM, and that's it uh, from that regard. But what we can do is, because we have access to the DOM, we can just use that to inject a new script tag and load in another JavaScript file. So we can do that like this. We want to make that file accessible, so we put it in the Web Accessible Resources array. And then we just inject it. And we use the chrome.extension.get URL method to get the URL to this from within our Chrome directory, uh, or I'm sorry, within our extension directory, and then it will throw it in there. Then we have those two and they're running, and now we can enable communication between the, the script that we injected onto the page and the content script, and we just do that using post message, which is the way that you can natively connect uh, and talk to uh, iframes on a page. So we just say window.post message, but when we post a message, both the page itself and our, our content script are going to um, be alerted, so you have to have some way of distinguishing where it's coming from. So I have in here, uh, when I post a message, I'm saying from the page. This is actually coming from the page. And then inside of my content script, inside of the ad, ad event listener, um, 
I'm just doing, if it has a data type and the data type is equal to page, then I want to do something with it. In this case, I'm just going to console.log out what it sees. So then we have background uh, slash event pages. <clears throat> and with these background event pages, they have access to all of the Chrome APIs. We uh, enable them like this, we just say background, and you, it can either be a page, like an HTML page if you need HTML, or it can just be a JavaScript file. So you just specify the JavaScript file that is, and it's either in a background page or it's an event page, depending on whether or not persistent is set to false. If persistent is false, then the event page is only loaded when it's needed, and then it's taken out of memory and its resources can be freed up, so it's not sitting there, your, your extension is not uh, causing Chrome to lag or, or take up too much memory. So it'll only come back to life when things um, send messages to it, then it'll pop back into uh, existence and answer those. So from there, then we can communicate with uh, the background or event pages from within all of our other scripts, like our content scripts, for example. So instead of the background page, we just say, uh, when we connect, we want to add a listener to that. And then inside of there, we can just say, when we receive a message, we want to do something. So in this example, I'm saying if the message type is equal to get quote, then I want to get a quote, and I'm going to use, uh, it gets this port object, and that's how it communicates back with um, the script that connected to it. So you can see here inside of the content script, for example, I created a port and I just connect to it and I can name it if I want to have different names. So like the content script could be coming from the content script and I could have a dev tool script coming from the dev tools or whatever. Uh, and then I just add a listener in here and when it posts a message back to that port, this is the, uh, the listener that will get called back. And so I can do something with that quote in this example. And then I'm sending the message here, I just say port.post message and it um, sends the message up there. So now I have communication between the script I injected into my into the actual page. That could be like being injected into Facebook or uh, MySpace or Zanga or something. And then uh, that can talk to the content script, and then the content script can talk to the background page, and then the background page can talk back uh, to the content script, which can relay back to the um, back to the injected script. And so the the background page can really act as kind of the the mediator, just passing messages from one piece to the other. So then we have page action, <clears throat> browser slash page actions. So browser actions would be like this. These are those icons that you add up here, whether it's like uh, Pocket or Google Hangouts or Chromecast or John Goodman. Uh, <laughs> you specify that just with browser action and then you can specify the icons here and you can have different sizes depending on which size it's going to render, but they are raster icons. Uh, so they're PNGs. And then you can specify a default title, uh, that will pop up with it and a default pop-up. And that's just an HTML page that when I click on that, it will open up that HTML page inside of a pop-up there. The other one is page actions. Uh, these are the icons that you see inside of the, um, the URL bar. Uh, and you specify them in the exact same way and you can specify a pop-up with them. The page actions are meant to be run like specific to certain pages, whereas the browser actions are more kind of just around for your use, like, like save to pocket, for example. <clears throat> so what can you do with different types of Chrome extensions? We can apply our own styles. So this is one that I actually have installed where uh, when I look at Hacker News, this is what it normally looks like, but I have the Hacker News enhancement suite or whatever that makes it look like this and it's a little bit more functional, just better looking than what that is. And you can easily just apply it like that. You just say content scripts and you tell it where you, where you want it to match. So at NebraskaJS.com, I want to inject in moregoodman.css. <laughs> you can create uh, your own web uh, technologies or applications built on top of that. So uh, newer versions of Chrome have that application launcher that they put in your, uh, in your bar. I don't know if I can, uh, I'll show it in a second. But you can load up app, uh, like apps that are built on top of web technologies like this. This is Postman. It's really nice for uh, testing uh, REST routes. So here I'm just hitting the GitHub API and testing it. I'm hitting their Zen and it gives me back a, a Zen quote. And you can uh, easily do that when you, uh, you can just say on runtime when you're launched, you want to create a window. I want the window to load in this main.html with all of these bounds and min and uh, min width and height and et cetera. So I'm doing that from within the background page and it can kick off an application like this. You can create DevTools extensions. Uh, so we can actually add in our own tabs and even our own sidebars into the DevTools, making, um, making it really easy to 
customize those in a lot of different ways, adding in uh, support for maybe our own frameworks that we're building or for uh, talking with, with our applications in some way or showing more information about our applications in the DevTools, making it really easy. So you just specify the DevTools page. It's a little convoluted to do this, but you specify the DevTools page, which is an HTML file. And then inside of that HTML file, you specify a script. And that's all you do. And then inside of that script is where you actually create everything. So here I'm creating a new panel, a new tab in the DevTools called Goodman Inspector. And then uh, I can create a sidebar element in there as well. So if I ever want to make sure that I know what John Goodman's best movie was, it will tell me right in the sidebar of the elements panel, for example, and, uh, and just let me know that. So then when we bring it up, I'm in the elements panel, and I can see over here that Coyote Ugly is right there, and I can just think about that all day, making my development life a lot easier. <laughs> so there's a number of extensions uh, I was trying to do a, a Google search to try and see who around here has built Chrome extensions. Uh, John Hobbs has this domain swap uh, repo on GitHub, and uh, Carl Zuloff has an extensions developer console as well. So uh, check those out. And there's a lot you can do. Um, there's a lot that you can configure. Uh, if you look at the, if you start with the manifest file and just look at the documentation for that, there's so much that you can configure, and a lot can go wrong. I was crashing Chrome all day today uh, because it wasn't liking my capitalization. It turned out to be, but <laughs> that was a problem. Uh, but it's really easy. You just have to bang your head against the wall for a while, and, uh, <laughs> and you'll have a lot of fun. So um, let me show a quick example, real quick, since I took the time to build it. I've got this uh, page here. This is just a, the background to do MVC page. But oh, let's see if I can put it on the screen here. So if you can't see it, there is a John Goodman as Colonel Sanders up here. And if I click on this, then it loads that HTML page that just tells me that John Goodman is the goodest. And that's just static, but I need to be reminded of it. <laughs> and then if I actually open up the DevTools, right away what it's doing is it's going to make a uh, connection to the background page and request a, um, a random John Goodman quote, and then it's just going to put, put it into my console in orange there so that I can, I can be reminded of what John Goodman, the good stuff, the good word of John Goodman. <laughs> and if I go into my elements panel and I go over here, you can see the John Goodman properties, maybe if I zoom in a little bit on this, but you can see, you know, he was in Roseanne, in case I forget. And then, as I go down further, I've got a whole Goodman inspector. If I go in here, oh, what? Zoom out. John Goodman loves you and thinks your code is awesome. So, you know, if this will be a really helpful uh, <laughs> extension for you, and if you scroll down a little bit. <laughs> Wait, what is that? Is that another web page? Or? This is just a web page. It's not actually running any JavaScript. That's using the marquee tab. <laughs> <laughs> scroll down, scroll uh, down. But that's in your dev tools? Yeah, this is running in the dev tools. So I can actually do anything from within here, and I can take um, the content scripts, inject code into my pages, have them send messages back to my content script, relay it through the background page to my dev tools, and give me more information. So I, maybe if I'm using Backbone, for example, there's a Backbone inspector, I think, and there's an Ember inspector, an Angular Batarang. Um, you can use all of those, and it will like list out your models and what's in there, and it'll list out your views, and you can click on them, and it'll show you, it'll highlight the, the views on the page and all of this. So it's, there's really a lot of powerful tools that you can build with that. Um, if I show the code real quick, just real fast. Here's the the uh, contents. Or I'm sorry, the manifest page. And in here, I'm just specifying. Uh, so we saw the content script. That's just loading in the um, the random quote into the DevTools console. And then I've got my icons there. My background page is just running, setting up, sending messages. And if I actually open this, this is kind of cool. Uh, the nice thing about building a Chrome extension is that you know you're only going to run in Chrome. And so I'm using native promises right here, and I'm. YOLO, I don't have to care, because it's, <laughs> it's going to work. Um, and so I just get a quote, or I get all of the quotes, and then I return them, and I just pass messages back and forth like that. And then, uh, oh, there's no, there's no API, that's just a JSON file? 
for the manifest one? The Goodman quotes. Oh, yeah, it's just a JSON file, unfortunately. Oh. I know. So I like, I that's the that's phase that's two, is, is getting up a whole, a whole uh, REST service for John Goodman. Yeah, yeah. He needs venture capital for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, so I've got my browser action here. That's just setting up, I'm telling it what icons to use. And it's loading up this pop-up URL, which if I go look at the pop-up URL, or pop-up.html, it just says John Goodman is the goodest. The panel page is what's being loaded in there into the dev tools, and you can see the marquee tab in there, and that's it. And then I've just got here where I'm loading in the John Goodman uh, image. And then um, the other cool thing is if I go to uh, nebraskajs.com, I have a content script loading specific to Nebraska.js, and so it runs, I have it running at document end, so the page is already loaded and then I can go in and manipulate it in, in different ways. So Zach has this really cool thing when you highlight, hover over the Nebraska.js logo, it fades to a cornfield. Well. <laughs> Any questions? Where can I get that? Downloading these from somewhat trusted sources, I suppose you have to open them up and make sure they're not going to be key loggers. Well, yeah, actually, that's the unfortunate thing is um, you ha when you want to publish this. So if I, I cr actually tried, I, I'm pretty new to this still, but I actually tried creating the um, the Chrome extension file. This .crx is the zipped up version of that. I was hoping that I could just send that to Zach and he could just double click on it and open it. It's completely restricted in Chrome. It can only come from the Chrome Web Store. And to publish it in the Chrome Web Store, you have to do a one-time $5 payment to them to say that you are an actual person or something. I don't know. But uh, I did pay it, but I, I probably didn't, I don't know, in all of those John Goodman pictures. So I didn't want to put it in there. Anyway, um, yeah. So that, that's the, the thing. You could take this, you can, this code is all on GitHub, you can go download it and uh, just run, um, ru oh yeah, I can show that in here. This is the uh, panel that I was talking about popping up here, the Chrome App Launcher, if you pop that up, these are all the different types of apps, so there's that Postman app. Google has another one called, um, uh, called the uh, Extension Developer Tool, and in here you can see all of your extensions and everything, so I can see my Goodman app right here. And I can use this, I can just keep it open and I can reload it. So I've, as I'm making changes, I just push that and reload it. If I want to inspect the background page, it'll open up the dev tools uh, to the background page in the context of that so I can, um, I can debug that. And uh, uh, here's where I can pack and uninstall that. But you just say load unpacked and when you load that up, you go to like your code directory and anything in here that is like a dev tools extension you just click on it and it shows, as long as it has a package, or I'm sorry, manifest.json in there, then it will load up um, with Chrome. And Chrome will automatically tell you if there's an error in here, in, in any of the files, it'll say that it's not gonna load it. And it, it actually disables it, you have to re-enable it. Yeah, so it's pretty secure, I guess. <laughs> any other questions? Yeah. Um, just curious, what editor were you using? Uh, that was Vent. Right. Uh, like, I saw that. I was like, that's way too sublimey. There's even a sidebar. What did you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think you have a Vim video online, right? Probably, yeah, probably. From Barcamp a few years ago? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So we Google, Google next name and Vim. A bunch I'll talk all day about Vim. Propaganda about Vim. Have <laughs> <laughs> you tried the Chrome extension that's basically a VI editor? Um, the Vimium one? That yeah, that gives you the VI key bindings for navigating Chrome. I had I had it, and then I don't. I think I have it, but it's disabled right now because it was annoying me with because it oh, it uh, overrides the GitHub shortcut. So I'm trying to use GitHub, and it's broken. Well, no, there is actually an, like a code editor. Oh, no, I haven't used that. Okay, I, and I I'm assuming that you can then I don't know where the files necessarily probably on the file system that you can have with. Like, your setup that I'm assuming see from one Chrome to the other. Well, that'd be really cool. I I have not used it, but a coworker, a former coworker of mine had. Nice. That's a good record. Uh, justice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs>